Hey guys, it's Jim. Back with new gloves. You like? I'm here to bring you guys the MMA fight for the UFC 171's co main event that features a welterweight title eliminator bout between the former WEC welterweight champion and UFC interim welterweight champion. Carlos, the natural born killer Condon, when he tangles with the chosen one, Tyron Woodley, an up and coming rising contender in the UFC's welterweight division. And about that, A is going to either raise somebody's profile and get them in the hunt for that title shot, or B, going to get them a direct title shot. But I will give you guys. A short fight profile of both of these guys, as well as a full fight breakdown of the two fighters and who I have ultimately winning. I'm moving one step closer to that UFC world to win. Yeah. Without further ado, let's get Carlos Condit. Tyrone Woodley. Now, Carlos Condit had a bit of a sweet and sour year in 2013 because at UFC 158, he would lose a unanimous decision to Johnny Hendricks via being out-wrestled and top control for over three rounds. Now in the fight, Carlos was clearly running on the feet, but every time he would gain momentum, standing up, Johnny would shut him down with the wrestling and top control. But at the same time, he was game the entire fight. He didn't stay on bottom for too long because he kept getting back up, and he was striking from the bottom as well. But overall, in the end, wrestling triumphed over striking. And Carlos suffered his second back-to-back -back loss. Because he lost to George St. Pierre previously. And then he just dropped that unanimous decision to Johnny Hendricks as well. But nevertheless, he was able to get back on the winning track. By stopping Martin Campman in a rematch of their 2009 bout in the main event of a UFC fight night and Carlos Condon was able to find his range get some good strikes in on Martin stop some of his takedowns and knock his ass out in the fourth round with combinations and knees now should he defeat his next opponent coming up in Tyron Woodley, it's likely that he's going to get the next title shot against whoever wins between Johnny Hendricks and Robbie Lawler. Now for Tyron Woodley, a win for him is a golden opportunity to break into the top five. And should he win, also be closing in on a welterweight title shot or at least be in the conversation to get the next shot. His year went a little like this. He came into the UFC after a great run of stride force by knocking out Jay Haran in the first round with that right and ground and pound, baby. It was sweet. Then his rise was halted when he faced a step up in competition against former Strike Force and Elite XC champion Jake Shields in a very ugly affair at UFC 161, which Jake took the split decision over Tyron. He made Tyron Woodley skip to his loop, and that was that. However, Tyron Woodley would redeem himself by knocking out former UFC World Welterweight Challenger Josh Koscheck in the first round via knockout. Which now sets him up to face another step up in competition against the natural born killer, the number one two guy in the world. We're breaking this Obviously, down. Carlos Condon is the taller of the two because he's 6'2", Woodley's 5'9". There's a significant height advantage there. 
and when it comes to reach, same thing. Carl's is a 76 inch reach, Wumi has a 73 inch reach, so there's three inch difference there. And uh, when it comes to cardio, Carl is constant all day long. He can go five rounds or three rounds and not really gas himself out. He can pace himself well, he's in good shape and everything like that. Todd Woodley's carrying all that muscle and it's hard for him to keep up the pace for like three round fights, let alone five rounds. But luckily for him, it's a three round fight, so he doesn't have to worry about the extra couple of rounds. Comes down to striking. Uh, Tyron Willis uh, really improved in his stand-up. Mind you, he's got power in his hands. Because, I mean, he's knocked out like three people so far. And he's got some, you know, kicks in there too. Um, a great hook. As well as he showed a little bit of diversity in his game with this uh, with that spinning back fist. But overall, when it comes to stand-up, he does not compare to Carlos Condit. Talk about stand-up fighting. Carlos Condit will be on the Mount Rushmore of stand-up fighters because he is one of the most dynamic stand-up strikers in the UFC. His stand-up is more fluent than Woodley's. You know, he throws crazy shit. Let's be honest. Like that crescent kick he threw on George St. Pierre, awesome. And his timing, and when he gets to range in, he is a friggin' monster. His Muay Thai is just on another level, and he can knock you out with a left hand, flying knee, you name it. Carlos is an excellent striker, and if he gets a hold of Woodley, standing up wise, he's dead. Simple as that. And he's got a great shot at Jiu Jitsu. Both these guys are brown belt, but. Make no mistake about it, no two brown belts are created equal because Carlos has been at that level a lot longer than Todd Woodley. He's got, you know, a better jiu-jitsu, you know, game than Todd Woodley overall. The guy submitted over 13 of his opponents, likes of Brock Larson, Frank Trigg, John Alessio, Carlos Prater, they either Rude could choke. Arm bar, guillotine. There's no show. joke on the ground either. Um, he submitted five of his opponents. Well, one was not really a, a legit submission. That was a submission due to strikes. Um, he submitted the likes of like Zach Lighty and uh, Rudy Bears. Yeah. Arm triangle choke and arm bar, respectively. He's got a Darce choke over some nobody guy. Now, the wrestling aspect of this fight goes to Tywin Woodley because he is an NCAA Division I wrestler and he's able to take down almost everybody that he fights. He's got good top control, good ground and pound. As we all know, Carlos Condon's main weakness is wrestling because George St. Pierre was able to take him down every single round of their fight to maintain that top control. And Johnny Hendricks was able to take him down every single round of their fight, but wasn't able to maintain the top. And almost everybody else that he's fought that was highly ranked or could really give him a serious fight has been able to get him down. And Diaz was able to get him down, Mark Kemp was able to get him down in both their fights. Um, Don Kim was able to get him down. However, he did show great improvement in his counter wrestling when he fought Campman for the second time by stopping the takedowns with hammer fists, double under hooks, and with that choke baby. Um, so from a defensive standpoint he's improved, but I like to see him tighten that part of his game up both defensively and offensively so that's no longer an issue for him because if Carlos Condit could become a overall complete fighter, that's a scary, scary dude for anybody he faces. And it'll be a real question mark of who could beat Carlos Condit if he has everything all together and there's nobody able to exploit any of his weaknesses. That's for sure. But overall, I have to give the wrestling advantage to Tyron Woodley because 
At some point in this fight, he's going to be able to get Condit down. Comes down to game plans. Now, the key for Carlos Condit, adapt to everything that is being thrown his way and counter or work himself up to a better position than the one he was in. He's got to throw a lot of feints in there and set everything up properly. He's got to measure the distance, measure the time when he's trying to go for something big, like a flying knee or a crescent kick. Like the crit that he did to George St. Pierre, he was able to fake George and he threw that kick in there perfectly and knocked him down. And when Willie's trying to take him down, he's got to be very creative with his takedown defense. Downs with hammer fists, double on their hooks, tries taking a choke if he's trying to go for a double leg or a single leg. And uh, if Willie's trying to go take him down from the back with a German suplex type of takedown, he's got to do the wrong knee bar and try to get, you know, that salt in Frank Mir style and submit him that way. But, if Tyron is able to get the top control when taking him down, Carlos has got to be actively looking to try to set up submissions and or sweeps and get the top control and get the ground and pound in to a finish him from the mouth or stick in a submission. But the main thing, don't stay on bottom unless you're being very active or then you're making great progress to submitting him or reversing him into some heavy ground and pound, drag this into the deep water where Willie will be most tired and then pick him apart with your strikes, back him up against the fence like Nate Marquardt did with, with that elbow, follow it up with some knee strikes and some combinations and finish him. Now, what Tyron Woodley has to do, he has to keep Carlos Condon off balance in this fight. He's got to stutter his striking with his wrestling He's got to keep him guessing all the time whether he's going to go for a strike or whether he's going to go for a takedown with either a double or a single. That's striking up well without wrestling. Carlos is trying to you know, throw kicks, take him down, catch those kicks, check those kicks. On the ground with him, you got to top control. You have to control his wrist. You got to control his hips. You can't let him have any kind of momentum. And when you're in the half guard, or full guard, where he's got the top control over Condon, you have to use the GSP model, which is basically a lot of ground and pound mixed up with elbows. And that Tar Willie needs to work on inflicting damage to Carlos's insides by heavy body shots to his ribs, his liver, and his stomach. Because if you have a guy with great cardio, you have to basically make it count for nothing and take that gas tank away from him. And by taking out those key areas, he's going to be breathing heavy and he's going to be a lot more easier to set up the finishing combinations and land that um, deadly overhand ride which Woodley possesses and finish this fight via knockout or TKO. Nonetheless, I have Carlos Condon coming out the victor in this fight via either knockout or submission or by split decision. Because I think his counter wrestling has improved enough to where he can stop enough of Woodley's takedowns, or he can work in his game, get his strikes in, do damage, take this out, this guy out with a barrage of combinations with kicks, punches, and high kicks, and finish his fight via KO, or at least drag him to the ground and submit him. Because one thing we know about Carlos Condit is that he's got excellent stamina. And he's always looking to finish. And this guy can work miracles at times to win fights when he's basically on the losing end. For example, when Roy McDonald completely outclassed him on the feet and on the ground, Carlos was able to come back in the third round and take out 
a gas Roy McDonald. And I don't see why you can't do the same thing with a, a gas Todd Woodley because after two rounds, Woodley's going to get very tired in the third and Carlos is going to be able to kick his ass. It's that simple. And with this fight, like I said, by either finish or by split decision, but Carlos Condit will go on to face the winner of Johnny Hendricks and Robbie Lawler in that night's main event that's after, you know, his and Woodley for the welterweight championship later on in the year. And no matter who wins, it's going to be an excellent fight regardless of who faces Carlos for that belt. Because with Robbie Lawler, you know that's going to be an action-packed fight because both him and Conor look to stand trade kicks and punches and knees and everything. And Johnny Hendricks, I know Carlos Condit wants to avenge that loss against Hendricks. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot more stiffer fight for Johnny this time around than it was the first time. And I like Carlos in that fight too, taking that belt away from Johnny, should Johnny beat, you know, Bobby Lawler. But nevertheless, Tyron Woodley, you know, I know he called himself the chosen one, but at UFC 171, in the co-main event, he won't be chosen for greatness that day. He will be chosen for defeat at the hands of the natural born killer. But on that note, he's going to get back on the horse. And someday, he will be the world champion at welterweight. However, it just won't be anytime soon. Now, that does it for this fight prediction video, and I'll see you guys for the next one.